Okay, thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone to this afternoon's Risk and Audit Committee meeting. Um, thank you for attending uh, all the councillors and the staff that we have here and media, any members of the public and of course anyone listening to us online. Um, I firstly want to acknowledge um, the huge body of work that's gone into this agenda, so it's quite a meaty agenda. Um, a lot of for us to get through this afternoon. Um, so what I'll just be asking is that, that any questions you have for clarity uh, around um, seeking information that will aid councillors decision making. So we'll try to keep it a pretty tight meeting so that we can get through this huge body of work that we've got ahead of us. So on that note, I will start with our agenda item number two, which is the members interest item. Oh, apologies first, do we have any? Doesn't look like everyone's here. So no apologies, thank you. Uh, members' interest. Um, I'll move it and we'll have um, Councillor Weber's seconder. All in favour? Any against? Carried unanimously, thank you. Right, now on to members' interest. Do any members have any interests, financial, non financial, in today's meeting agenda? <laughs> Right. So we'll move. Can I have someone move that there are uh, there's no one, nothing to dispose? Thank you, Council Cal, second of Deputy, Deputy Mayor Basher. All in favour? Aye. Any against? Very generous. Thank you. Right, now we're moving on to agenda item number three, which is a confirmation of the minutes. And I'm going to take the minutes as read. Any point, any Amendments, any discussion, questions? No, could I have somebody move that the Risk and Audit Committee receive and confirm the minutes from the meeting of the 22nd of March? Councillor Howard, seconded Councillor Grafton, all in favour? Any against? Carried unanimously, thank you. And to now move on to the action point list, agenda item number four. And I propose to take these one by one, which will probably just make it a little bit easier. Um, before I start that, I will ask Douglas if he has anything to add from when this report was written. Uh, I'm okay. okay, so the Punakaiki lease report, um, we do have some information in our agenda with regard to that. Any comments? Councillor Reedy. Yeah, uh, just regarding the, um, uh, it goes back a couple of years now, at least the operation of the wastewater effluent site. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't got the paper with me, but it has to be previously discussed at meetings, but nothing seems to be happening. Okay. I know, oh, I know it's in the uh, papers coming yes. forward, but we're talking about now. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that over to the public excluded part of the meeting because we have a paper around Punakaiki then, which I think will address that and then we'll decide what we'll release from that into um, the public. Okay, 206, which is the Waka Katahi <coughs> procedural audit. I think that question has been answered. Any further questions or discussion? No. 208, PIP report updates. And this was around the Waimangaroa Hall. Any questions for clarification, Councillor Howell? Could you just uh, explain what the um, complete, the, the work that was identified and that needs to be done? What is the nature of this work? I'll refer to. Oh, I can't forget. We, we received something like that. It's a significant list of about 20 to 25 items of work that needs to be costed. Um, and then check against compliance to make sure we can issue that certificate of public use. So once we've got that cost, we'll come back with a, a plan as to what we need to do. With. I know there's a huge keenness to get the pool open, I understand that, but um, we just got to make sure we do it to ensure that we make our compliance all the good. Any other questions? 
Councillor Reedy. This has been a, an ongoing saga, to be honest with you, with the one before. Uh, and there was obviously some articles in the news uh, almost a year ago regarding this. And um, uh, a lot of things have, sort of have travelled. And we haven't got anything yet. Now we've got a, uh, a report of things to be done. But as far as I'm aware, we can see put in a uh, contractor uh, to do some work. And uh, all of a sudden, it seems to have fallen over. I don't think that's quite correct because there was a body of work that was done, and there is also a report attached to this which shows that scope of work and what was achieved. This is subsequent to that other um, matters that have had to have been done. So, uh, Chrissy, is there anything you wish to add to that, or Douglas? So the okay, okay. So, so the first key is just to confirm the Kano report in that work, which was the kitchen upgrade. That work's been completed. Problem is though, when the when that work was being done, a number of other things were done, and we're just working through who gave the authority for that work to be done, which has created another list, which is the scope of works we're now getting waiting to get costed, so we can then determine, okay, now how do we deal with that problem? There are clearly some side issues about how we're going to. You know, like where liability falls in terms of that work that was done, which was not expected when under the Kanoa work scheme. Okay, um, Councillor. Okay. I can, I can speak a bit on that, Colin. Um, just there have two issues um, with fighting builders, to be fair, and it just landed an excellent one. <laughs> so he's in there now just doing it, the, the scope of works. So um, he would be making it completed. I think what we have here in this the commentary is a way forward, and that report will come back to this committee. Okay, I'm going to move on to the um, 210, which is the operation performance report. Um, have I not seen down? 209, yeah. This Health and safety. So, um, acting CEO. Rachel has provided an explanation there. I think it's as read. There's a comment there. No, okay. Now we'll go to 210. Anything further on that? Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Chair. Um, down here, um, just says uh, this means that there are other last things. This means that there are no nil dollar forecasts in this report. What, what exactly does that mean, please? I think we'll find Councillor Eddie in the report last month. We quickly identified that we, we might have spent just say ten dollars to the end of January, and then we said, "Oh, we're going to spend by the end of the year no dollars," which clearly is wrong. So we spent a bit more. We spent quite a bit of time, Neil and I, just going through the forecasts and making sure we've got those forecasts right. I will just preface there's a little bit of um, narrative in that report. I'll just need to clarify about that. The year being the calendar year, and that's my um, era in terms of putting that narrative through. But just to do with the harbour, and we'll get to that. It's reasonably minor, but it just will clarify a cash flow issue. Okay. okay. Anything else on two ten? Two eleven operation performance report. This is around the campground. Councillor Sampson. Uh, so it's only the first sentence there that various reports have been um, proposals for at least campground in the past two or three years. If um, you have a copy of those proposals, please. I can't remember seeing them, so I can just sort of have a reminder just what those proposals are. Yes, could I ask you? Rachel, just with regard to that and the campgrounds, how how council proposes to deal with that going forward into the long term plan? Because maybe that's something that could be wrapped into that council assumptions request for reports around campgrounds. Oh, well, only if you want me to. Okay. Um, and, and I think my short time here, campgrounds have I found been quite a. Um, 
a challenging uh, activity to look at in terms of one, are we providing the activity we say we'll do as funding writers, our expenditure right, that type of thing. There's been talk about whether we're leasing, whether an owner, owner sort of a, a model where we put our own staff in, and then clearly we've got the community campgrounds, which do the, the lion's share of work here. What I've just said in discussions with the management team is, when you get a pile of questions coming on these matters, and I've done this previously uh, where I came from with campgrounds, it's a good time to sit down and go, okay, <laughs> we've got a number of models here. Should we be looking at a consistent model across? And one of the things in my previous experience, we looked, could we put one operator across all three or four campgrounds? It was difficult and challenging because geographically they were split and we did test the water and there wasn't. But that's the type of thing we need to do. We also need to make sure we're linking our campgrounds and others' campgrounds into the same framework as you would with your frequent camping arrangements too. So I think it's just a good time to come back, test the water as we go forward with that, um, you know, predominantly, I suppose, domestic and international tourism market in that speak and make sure we've got it right. We've received good money like many councils have out of TIFF. Let's make sure that investment's working working for us as well. So it'll be a long term plan uh, document. I think, I think we misunderstood. I understand that's what's going to happen with the long term plan. Yeah. But in the first sentence, it says that there have been various proposals in the past two, three years. And that's what I was wondering what those proposals are. And I think the ones I've seen have been more the way of email, discussion, comments, notes, nothing of any great no, no moment. This, the one that's on the agenda today is the most firm one you'll see. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Councillor Sampson and Right, so that's good. So that'll be picked up through the long-term plan process. Um, the next two items will, are in public excluded, so they will we'll discuss those at that point. So we've covered off all of the items. So I'd look to see if someone would like to move the motion that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the action point report for information. Councillor Weston, are you moving that way? Seconded by Councillor Grafton. All in favour? Right. Any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the risk and audit work plan. Um, we've discussed this at length the last two meetings. So this is once again for information. Um, I'm just taking that as read. And I'm going to move that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the Risk and Audit Work Plan for information. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Webb, any discussion? Councillor Reedy. Still stand by what I say that it, uh, uh, as a work, uh, work plan, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't um, uh, work in with what the Auditor General has uh, identified as being an ideal work plan. So for me, it's sort of frack work plan essentially and all those accounts. So I'm, I'm putting any further discussion, putting the motion all in favour? Aye. Any against? Madam please. So that's carried. I'm moving on now to agenda item number six, which is the statement of intents for the council controlled organisations. Um, so as you'll know or would have read, um, we received statements of intents for council controlled organisations each year. Um, what we receive here are the drafts. So if there's any comments to go back to well, the holdings or with regard to the Airport, uh, we're not dealing with that till seven, I'm getting ahead of myself. So with Fuller Holdings, West Reef and Fuller Recreation, um, that will be dealt with after we've had a discussion around this. So I'm going to firstly ask you, Douglas, if there's anything further to add. No, Madam Chair. Uh, well, no, sorry, there's one. I just think we sort of paid, made couple of resolutions regarding Buller recreation and its equity um, to assets percentage. I um, probably should have uh, engaged with uh, Dean Fibbs over there. Just, I think it was just an administrative issue, but 
There is, um, it's, it probably just highlights something we will, as part of doing the next long-term plan ready and working in conjunction with obviously holdings, we do need to understand whether there's an ability to increase the, obviously the funding we get out of there. But I do make the observation that it is a bit tricky at the moment for any business over the next 12 to 18 months in particular. And so therefore, leaving our commercial entity with a little bit of latitude in terms of cash flow um, and ability to retain profits isn't necessarily a bad thing here, rather than the shareholder trying to eke out a little bit more because it wants to have a certain target. Now, as a straight out investment, that might not be quite as acceptable as some might like, but I think in a time like this, it's just a prudency issue. Uh, on top of that, I see we've got a little bit of uncertainty about the three waters and where that means. And so there's some issues and costs that holdings slash West Reef will be looking at too, which need to be balanced. So I think it is a wee bit of a middle of the road. We just keep a steady hand on this year and the SOI is subject to us just having a bit further discussion. We do have a discussion, H1I, tomorrow with um, holdings and um, that will just allow a bit of management um, discussion to where we end up in by June. Which means you. Okay, Douglas, I'm going to firstly deal with um, the Buller Holdings SOI. So any questions for clarification to start with with regard to that one? Councillor Reedy. I have asked that we share. In terms of uh, decreasing the um, uh, shareholder equity ratio from 60 to 45%, uh, where was that... Um, is that calculated by BBC, by the directors? What was the, uh, who did the calculation? Yes, did you ask? So, that, uh, that, that calculation was done by Bill of Holdings. What, what we did is we tech, we reviewed the um, statement of the 10th financial results of June 22, another couple of similar, what we saw similar uh, CCOs to Bill of Holdings to see whether that type of ratio looked reasonable. And it looks, it looks sort of acceptable, in other words, this type of um, entity is moving closer to that 45 to 50% range, as opposed to being a slightly more conservative 60% range. So there's two things about my comment there. One is it's not inconsistent with a couple of other CCOs. Secondly, they have got quite a big program of development for their yard work. So until we start to see some final plans and where that's going and how they're ultimately gonna fund that off their balance sheet, i.e. cash, or raising you know, any, any further debt they might want to do. We just have to sort of probably see that, yep, okay, that'll be fine, we'll review it. But it's not an outlandish change, would be your summary of me. Um, just for clarification, perhaps for newer councillors, or um, maybe a little explanation around ratio of shareholders fund to total assets. If you could cut that way out of your 101. Counting, counting 101, yeah. yeah. Um, so any, any business has obviously a pile of assets, which might be, could be land or it could be buildings, or in this case, it's predominantly to do with plants, so diggers, excavators, trucks, it's all that type of thing. And so what a, what a business owner has to decide is how much of their own money do they wish to put into that business and how much of that uh, do they wish to try and borrow from a bank or another financier. And so you get this simple, it's the equity owned by the people, obviously put in by the owners or debt. And you generally find that as a um, shareholder, but more probably as a director of a board, you might like to have less debt because that makes your um, ability to pay your bills, i.e. your bank back, a little bit easier from your operations. Uh, you then probably look at another option, which is you might like to load your company up with debt because that might just change your risk profile um, you would all the number you will have had businesses where you've considered those type of options. Uh, it's always better to use somebody else's money um, than your own, but still got to pay the bills. So really what it comes down to is industries often have sort of, I suppose, scopes or ranges they'll work within. It still comes down to does the business you're looking at actually can it generate the cash flow through a couple of things? Can it pay its bank and the interest or principal repayment? Secondly, can it pay its creditors and its staff? And thirdly, can it pay an adequate return to its shareholder? So the ratio to some degree, you could argue is irrelevant. Well, no, it's useful because it lets you know whether that business is operating consistently with the rest of the industry, if you can calculate those numbers. But ultimately, are you happy with the return is the key thing. Okay, thank you. Councillor Reedy. Councillor Reedy, 
Thanks, Douglas. Hopefully it was helpful. So Councillor Reid. Uh, Madam Chair, what we're saying is uh, uh, at the moment 60% uh, it's basically um, uh, shareholder IEBDC us who are uh, uh, funding the uh, the operation. But dropping it down to 50%, you are now allowing more debt to come in, which ultimately, with, uh, I'm sure they can service the debt, they'll have a big drop 15%. My view is quite large. I know they've got some big expenses coming up. But then on the other hand, we say, oh, uh, but then the few next one or two years could be a little bit difficult in terms of uh, ongoing work. So here we are saying uh, we could have a, an issue with potentially the work coming in. We're happy to um, uh, pay more interest on our loans. I, I, I just believe that the, uh, there seems to be a bit of contradiction there. And I also believe that 15% is quite high. It's quite a high drop. In terms of being allowed, uh, allowing the uh, BHL to uh, extend their borrowing, I think that's you've so probably this. you've probably summed up that in a way in which the staff have looked at it too, Douglas, in the sense that it's a discussion point you want to have with the staff and yeah. directors of um, Bola Holdings, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I suppose the question, uh, Council Reedy, would be. Do, um, do we see it such a, 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 an issue that we should inject more equity or capital ourselves into the business to push up that ratio? Could be an answer that maybe maybe we should. At this stage, and I probably more line up this is, I always like to see proposals where the bank is actually supporting that proposal. Because the reason I think that's important is that it's easy for an owner to run along being totally confident in everything they want to do, but if they're getting another party like a bank and also be confident they'll put their money up, it gives you a slightly, I think, a greater confidence that what's being proposed in terms of growth or development is supported more than just your own personal decision. And even, you know, I think even you know, people I, I know who have their own private businesses, I can say, I've paid for my debt. It's like, well, that's good. Are you still hungry and going to work every day to pay? Well, if you pay off the bank or well, you're not now, maybe you should get a bit more debt and grow more or restructure your business. So. I think, Councillor Reddy, we could, we might, um, we might agree to, to disagree on the issue there, unless the council think, because if they don't like that percentage, then they'll need to inject some equity into the business. Right now, the BHL are telling us, you know, they they can fund it from their own cash, and if they've got to do any borrowing stuff, fine on that basis. So. Thank you, councillors. Councillor, no, no. Thank you. Um, the the. Draft recommendation is that we instruct the staff to talk to them. So, are they looking for writing instructions from us, or that's a very good question, Douglas? You're looking for a not so much on BHL West Rift, to be fair. Certainly on recreation, there's a, a bit of a, how particularly they want to structure their management fee in two years' time. I just it's quite a big lift. I can we need to understand how that works. But equally, if councillors have got some questions they want to raise, remember, this is a draft. It's a draft mm -hmm. for a particular reason. So if you've got anything you want to add to it as a, a memoir note, that would be mm -hmm. no problem to be great. Okay, on that note then, is there any other, anything else? I was to say that the, just in line from Colin saying, you know, the cost of borrowing at the moment is quite high, you know, and, you know, that, that could be an impediment to, you know, it's one it's one way of, of, of gaining confidence in your business through, through borrowing, but but the cost of borrowing is quite high. Um, is it is it worth delaying that that decision to, until the cost of borrowing is reduced and actually stacking your own stacking your own cash first? I mean, I mean, it's it's a valid question that will get raised tomorrow, as as we should do. So yeah, I think we'll take that we'll take that as a question you'd like us to raise, which we would certainly be asking as well. So if I was to sum it up, then there are, we won't say concerns, but there, there has been some discussion around the table about what the ratio looks like and the reasons for it. And we'll be instructing staff to have that discussion with the CEO and staff, um, yeah. the CFO of Fuller Holdings um, to get, get the view on where that sits and what that might look like so that we can finally assess what our risks profile around that would be because I think there's a bit of lacking information at the moment without that 
but more of an in-depth discussion. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I, I don't disagree with something. Mean, I don't disagree with that. I think I think um, <clears throat> Councillor Bash already made the comment, which I think is all on our minds. It's going to be a challenging next 12, 18 mm -hmm. months. Is this the time to be developing and borrowing? Sometimes when there's a recession, it's good to go for gold. <laughs> Maybe this isn't your own. As as, you know, I mean, to me, as long as that it's part of the, the thinking around the decision you make. So, so we've covered off the ratio there. I think we clearly. Yep. Sure. yep. yep. Um, anything else in the Buller holding statement of intent that Councillor Nain on here? Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, the recommendation or the um, C, which refers to the um, service level fee increase. We, we talked earlier today about um, you know, fair and equity in, in the rates, et cetera, and obviously any increase in the fee is going to reflect in the general rate, and those that pay a higher general rate will pay a higher part of the fee. So I'm wondering, you know, should we be talking to Buller Holdings about raising the fees? Yes, in, sorry, um, sorry, can I just interrupt you for a wee moment because you've jumped ahead to the Buller Recreation well, I, I'm still on this report because that's that's draft sorry. recommendation C. Oh, sorry, I was just dealing with each attachment individually so that we, but yep, okay. okay. So, yep, well, I'll hold off. Yeah, can you? I was just yep. trying to deal with each one and then we'll go back and look at the re recommendation. Okay, yep. I don't disagree with exactly what you're saying, I'm just my bad. So, with the Buller holding statement of intent, just so that if there's any other adjustments or questions, that we'd like the staff to take to the CEO of Buller Holdings. I'd like to deal with that. I did have a, um, I've got a couple of small wording issues, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to go through that in the meeting, but it's just, I'll bring it to your attention. It's just a couple of repeats. Um, and then I think I'll get to the page um, to do with page 53. Um, it talks about, um, just Buller Holdings revenue and expenditure, just a little bit of a um, more clarification, because this is the parent company and the year's going out. It's not really going to affect um, the coming year, but if, if you could just get a little bit more detail around that. Because it does jump up across the parent yeah. company, so it's hard to see. Yeah. Anything else on the Buller Holdings statement of intent? Great, I'm going to just look. Madam Chair, just the forecast um, distribution. Yes, goals, and I, I hear what um, Mr. Marshall said about the tough years, etc. cetera, but yeah. um, you know, we had a presentation from them and a huge increase in revenue was being predicted in the presentation that we got earlier um, in the year, and yet the 1.3 million is staying static. And I just think that that's something that needs looking at. I mean, if the business is growing, we as shareholders would expect a, a better return. Mm -hmm. I think what they're indicating, we'll probably see that once we go into the West Reef statement of intent, is that the, although the income is, is increasing, so are the expenses. But I don't disagree that we should be more of a stretch target. Um, so if that's something we want to indicate back to uh, Buller Holdings, then we'll get a feeling for, let's have a think about that before we get to the resolutions around um, what we want you to have yep. a discussion with them about. Well, I guess, you know, what, what I'd like to see is what is our return on investment mm -hmm. in, in relation to the 1.3 million and, and I'm finding that difficult to, to calculate. To calculate. Yeah. And return on investment. Douglas, can you put that down? Uh, as a, yeah, I'd, Mr. Mayor, I thought that there used to be a figure in the in the um, statement of intent, wasn't there? It was yeah, it used to, to be. Was it ten percent or fourteen percent or something? So we'll ask Douglas to address that with um, with the yeah, CEO. I, don't, I will do that. I actually something I tried. was in the document here, but I'll. Um, give that okay, so down. if we There's, can address that yeah. in a discussion around the forecasted distribution. Do I get a sense around the table, which is probably a, a bit of a silly question. Of course, we'd always want more because it helps with our, um, the cost for the rate payer. So it's definitely worth a discussion. Okay. All right. Um, West Reef. 
statement of intent, anything specific in that one that isn't sort of covered off by um, Graham, did you want to talk about the income and expenditure there or you? Well, yeah, I, I guess I'm having difficulty when you're getting an increase in revenue, but you're getting a corresponding huge increase in expenses while you would bother actually expanding. But um, I guess that's just from a farmer's perspective. I think it's prob probably from most Anyone's perspectives, perspective, yeah. but um, yeah. I think what they... Oh, Mr Mayor, you want... Oh, so yeah. certainly reflecting on our discussion with the board, they acknowledge that margin is being squeezed in terms of the um, um, securing the work is, has squeezed margins um, with the escalation of costs. Some tendering is is locked in the ability to respond to increase um, you know input costs to them are already locked into perhaps previously tended jobs and that sort of thing. So there's pressures on margin um, but it's an absolute fair point. There isn't any point growing if your margin's being eroded to the point where it's not doing the work. Right. And some further discussion. Something the board are aware of as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else on that one? Just oh, Councillor Grafton? Just one. So, again, if we knew the percentage, yes. then we could relate that to the next two years, couldn't we, to see if we're getting a ret what return we're getting? Yeah, whether it's going to drop or not. Yeah, so we'll, we'll ask for that, yep. yeah, for that yep. to be discussed and come back in a, in a revised draft. I'm going to move on to Bola recreation, um, recreation. And I'm going to go back to you, Councillor, and move on then to your discussion around the management fee. <laughs> so you make a, a very good point there. And I think that absolutely uh, I would be encouraging councillors to ask the um, directors to look to increase the fees so that the users of the centre are actually the ones that cover the increase in the cost rather than the general rate payer. Would that be a general feeling around the table? I guess it's a, That's the I guess it's a fine balance, but the business model is not it? it's like any retail thing, you increase the fees, um, why or what that has to be So I guess we want a bit of analysis of um, fee increase and what they um, what effects they project um, on the um, income. Yeah, probably not the analysis that would come to us in that detail, but for them to provide an understanding of how it impacts um, if they're still looking for an increase. We realise it's hard out there, but they have also indicated to us, Mr. Mayor, when we've met with them, that their fees are still among some of the lowest fees. Um, especially around gym membership and so on. So I think if you could add that to your list, um, yep, please, Douglas. And they have raised them significantly pre-Christmas and held the fees, this is gym memberships from memory um, for the elderly, well, not elderly, sorry, the... Over 65, you better watch what you say there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the over 65s. Um, uh, so that it's still deemed as affordable for those users or segments of our community. So uh, <laughs> very important that they have access to gym services. Yes, I think you might finish there. Councillor Reedy. Madam Chair, my concern is uh, uh, quite a lot of question, next to $55,000 for coordination fees, one of the things that they have they are some uh, rate payers. Uh, for uh, for recreation, uh, straight costs. We've got um, uh, payroll costs of around about six fifty to seven hundred thousand. Uh, I don't know what what you know, with the uh, with the number of staff they've got. It's a very high staffing level as well. Staff cost, I can see. Uh, and when I see uh, we talk about increasing the rates. Uh, to accommodate what we've uh, uh, got the, the overhead of the great costs. But we've got a membership base of around about 700, which uh, for this district, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, 
I'm not including it, the gym membership, but uh, we've now gone from two from two uh, fitness centres to one. And I'm not sure really uh, where a lot of these people uh, the other fitness centre have gone. But um, I'm more concerned about the 800,000 that we're paying through the rate payer. And um, uh, we'll lower offering service, don't get me wrong. Um, the narrow us in the 55. Plus, we're also looking at uh, reducing the shareholder uh, uh, equity from 60 to 45, which I know is going to be a, a discussion point. Um, but yet, uh, at the moment, our shareholders funds, I believe, are about 18 million. And that was after an amendment last year uh, requested by the audience point of view, uh, not taken voluntarily, uh, of 9 million. So, just exactly what is that per cent of worth? Is it worth eighteen million dollars, or are we going to be looking at another repayment for the BY this year? I think, three million, Jeff. I think uh, Council really went from eighteen down to eleven, and the impairment was based on the, um, what's the technical one. Neil, can remember it's that it's that public entity um, calculation which doesn't have a cash flow. So I don't think you'll find there's another impairment. The impairment is is there, um, but the bigger issue we have, totally agree with you is pushing the fee to us and therefore the impact on rates. And secondly, um, the reason that the ratio has gone there because we don't see any other reason any reason that would be changing. So I, th I think that you, you make a good point, Councillor Edie. I think with the 851 that's currently in for the 2024 year is what we indicated in the, what was indicated in the long-term plan. So that's exactly what we would have budgeted for or what council will budget for going forward. And I think I'm getting a feeling around the table that councils don't have an appetite to increase the service level fee, rather that the work centre should look to increase their fees for its members. And I think if it was looking for a reduction in the future of councils, we're looking for that to help reduce rates. And I think that's a discussion for the long-term plan. So I think for the purposes of this, we go back, ask Douglas to go back and discuss that councils do not have an appetite to increase the membership fee for 2025-26. And then councils can discuss at the long-term plan, plan process the management fee going forward. Mr Mayor, did you have something to add to um, I don't have the exact figures, but just to answer a couple of Councillor Lee's questions, the management fee was reduced um, by 30 or 50,000 three or four years ago, and, and it's been held at that. So it was higher, it's come down to what it is now. Um, just that's, So that's just information that they have. Um, and the gym membership, so um, I wouldn't say the membership doubled, but, it's, but it went up by a few hundred when they took over the other gym and all these equipment and all the rest of it. So there was quite a business plan around the rationale and the return on investment. I think it was about a 12 month return on investment from getting those memberships in and, and, and to um, account for what they've paid, you know, the um, other local operator that they bought out. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for that. So I think we've we've had a good discussion around that, good questions. And so I'm, I'm going to just talk about the motion, the recommendations we have on the table. And um, more, I would say, I'm just a little bit, not concerned, but I think there needs to be a bit of rewording here with B and C in the sense that I don't think it's council staff going to um, instruct Buller well, District Council staff to discuss the equity ratio change in Buller Recreation Statement of Intent with the Board of Buller Recreation. I don't think you're going to the Board of Buller Recreation, no, you're true. going to the CEO and management of Buller Recreation. So I'll be amending it to that. And then the same, and then the same for C. So it would be senior leaders to senior leaders, and then the CEO of the B, of BHL will take it through to his board. So that's two amendments in B and C. I'll just I'll just hold fire, we'll get this right. So take that yes. Chief executive. Chief executive. Yeah. Chief executive. So, yeah. we had just, why don't we just say with the with the chief executive of Buller Holdings Limited in that last piece? 
because a lot of recreation chief executive courses the same individual. So if we just push it to the holdings company and B and yep. A and C with the chief executive of Willow Holdings Limited, make it a bit yep. more tidy. Yep. Yep. Okay, so with those amendments, so we're, right, we're going to, for the purposes of that, um, People are listening in and understand what the resolutions are. I'm going to read them to make sure we've got them a okay. So um, I'm going to take them as all together. So that the Risk and Audit Committee A received the statements of intent from Bola Holdings Limited, West Reef Services Limited, and Bola Recreation Limited for the year ended 30th of June 2024. Instruct Bola District, this is B, instruct Bola District Council staff to discuss the equity ratio change in Bola Recreation Limited statement of intent from 60% to 45% with the CEO of Bola Holdings Limited. Mm -hmm. C, <clears throat> instruct Bola District Council staff to seek further information to and we'll put an end in there and discuss the proposed service level increase for 2024-25 year with the CEO of Paula Holdings Limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a few other things to discuss as well. So I think we might just put in other matters identified. Yep, I'm, no, I'm happy with that. Do you want to just list them in the minutes, though, just so that they can be seen and, and known what they are? That would be would good. Be can you, useful? Can so you if add I, them in? I can, can do that. Um, the things that you want to discuss? Yes. Yeah, I've got a note of those. Okay. But if I, if I just... Call them out. Why don't I just call them good. out? Yeah, so the, the first one was in the SOI for Holdings Limited, and there's an increase in their expenses between 24 and 25. We need an explanation of that. And obviously the impact through to 2026, we want to just seek some confidence that their decision to expand uh, and the development of the yard and the impact that will have at this time is still seen as the appropriate um, position to be in. Well, we do just, I suppose, express our concern with West Reef and that although we've quite a good growth and turnover, it is a, a reasonably slim margin being generated and therefore just questioning whether that is worth the value of doing the work in there. For Bottle Recreation Limited, the service, service level fee changes in 25. We just need some clarity on that and again clarifies we need some clarity in 26. That's part of our resolution anyway. Um, next point would be, you know, we'll go through these again, of course. There's no no appetite to see it's making a very long resolution. That's what I'm trying to say. No, no, I, I, we don't need to have a resolution, no. we just have a minute capture would be fine. Yes, um, the see. other one is just seeking some clarity around, um, as the mayor said, the business growth when the second gym closed and what that's meant because it's probably just a little bit of history that would be good to have. I think that's captured the key points. You've got the return on investment. I've got the return on investment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I hadn't, but I will add that. Add that. The percentage <coughs> of, I just wanted to put a flag with that. I know in the past CCO has been a little bit reluctant to put that in because of the competitive nature of um, they see in that industry. I don't necessarily agree that that's an issue, but we certainly should put it and we'll report back to you on that. Mm -hmm. And just while I'm talking, Council Radio, um, well, there's a, that um, valuation issue I've found the page I was referring to. I've, so I've, found, I've found the page in the agenda on that valuation change for Perk. So I'll, I'll tell you where that is yeah, after me. I call yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. So I think we just might tweak these. So instruct Fuller District Council staff to discuss the Ratio equity change in, and it's not just full of recreation, is it? It's all, so in all, in all statement of intents, along with other meters identified by council with the CEO of Bullet Holdings Limited. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, so let's do that as B. Um, we will. We can be quite specific with C, I think, because that is a service level fee increase. We'll keep that one there. 
And D, once the details of the equity ratio change in the service level fee, no, once the details of the information sought are available and modification is made to the statements of intent as necessary on these items, report to council so that the statements of intent can be adopted by the due date. Move. I move Councillor Nayland, second Deputy Mayor Basher. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Any against? No. Carried unanimously. Thank you for the good discussion around those. Right, we're going to move on now to the statement of intent for Westport Airport Authority. So, um, just like the other statement of intent, Westport um, Airport Authority, in this case, is a joint venture, but still falls, un falls under the, um, what is a, considered to be a CCO, so it requires a statement of intent. So, Douglas, anything to add to this before we get into it? No, Madam Chair, I think it's been interesting in that airport authority was certainly having a bit challenged after COVID, like many businesses related to sort of tourism and activity such as that. But it's been steadily, our income's been steadily growing in, in that basis. Uh, we certainly had certain works and there's certain uh, works done under flood repairs, which have all been completed. Um, there's, there's a few pieces of work we just want to work with the crew there and this the infrastructure team working on that trying to make a slight more resilient. So we've been more bundling around some of the sites to keep water out if we ever get water on the airport again. Um, but do you think the airport is, is certainly moving financially into a slightly better position? So that what I suppose what we've just tried to indicate is uh, we're not saying that we could be looking to lower the rating contribution because there is a, a bit of a deficit to sort out uh, the next few while with ourselves and the Ministry of Transport going forward. Um, Mrs. Triggs had a, was involved in a week, few discussions on the airport a couple of weeks ago where, where sort of that was sort of tentatively discussed, but we'll formalise up those views when we send <laughs> this document through. So I think it's it's, a, it's an important part of obviously the activities we have, but we just financially now need to try and just get it back onto it. We'll probably never get it in a rate neutral position, but we're just trying to need to grow the revenue and just hold the spend until we can. There is a major work on the runway for four years out, I think it is. So just to be mindful for that, it's outside the three years. So thank you, Mr. Thank you for that um, explanation. I just have a question which I'll kick off with. Just moving out to um, long-term bandwidth budget 24-25 and 25-26. Like it's obviously, especially in 24-25, looking at a um, improvement, still a loss situation, but an improvement and from a risk point of view, how confident are you that um, you can provide that assurance that that is achievable? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm confident that we can deliver. I mean, we've certainly seen, you know, growth in the last 18 months in the landing fees and service charges, and we've certainly seen um, there's been some re rejigging of cost structure uh, in the last uh, few months that will help the, the future position. I mean, it's a, it's a business that is uh, reasonably, I suppose it's reasonably simple, but it's complex because of its risk elements. So it's all about getting your volume and having good service with the people coming through and also with those companies. And, and I think you know, from what my experience, and we're probably all flowing out of there, that's it's a good experience. Um, so just we've just got to keep doing the good things well, and then we just get the turnover. Hopefully, we'll continue to lift. So the other, the other thing is to just make a reflection is that we do correctly identify the cost of the depreciation here, and it's just then how we use that cash generated the capital works as well. So we've just got to be mindful. Some years we build up cash, and there'll be more money around, but there's big works except with the runway and some work on that coming in a couple of years' time. So. And just for clarity for councillors, um, around employment costs, which were higher um, in the 23-24 budget, and then they drop off. But if I read that right, it looks to me like you'll go away from maybe employees and um, there might be some contracted out work. Is that how that was read? Uh, that's um, not, not, not necessarily. I think it's, okay. it's a position that we've... we've we sort of held the employment costs uh, pretty well much. They, they will be a bit higher in these 
23 financial year. We think in 24, we certainly that's the level we need. We just just sort of test, just it'll be a bit of a test for 25, 26, whether we can drop them down a wee bit. Um, I think we're probably, and we've talked about this a lot, being mindful about getting our safety issues right. And so some of the other costs that we've got in terms of, we've got quite a bit of high maintenance work in there. And it might be your fine. I know this was done um, 80 months ago. Pull back on maintenance, spend more money on your staffing. We've just sorted out some staffing issues in the last wee while. So there just might be a wee balance of that cost definition going forward. I think that the thing I certainly we've put a lot of focus is this coming year, because that's probably the year building on quite a good year this year. We want to build another good year and then we start to see you know, what the financial um, set, you know, what the financial strength. It'll never be um, you know, positive cash flow for the council or military transport, but it will certainly be um, better than what it's you know, better than what's been in previous years. Thank you for that explanation. Any other questions, councillor? Oh. Just think it was a misprint yeah, because so. you know what a accountants are like, and it, and it looks like the audit fees are reducing. I mean, how does that work? I, I don't know any other business where you, you start paying less for your auditors. I think you might find we may, and I, I will we'll, we'll confirm it, I, we might have captured um, the part of the second year because the audit, correct me if I'm wrong, Neil, the 21 audit was done very late and that, that may have impacted on what our audit fees are looking like for that year. So I think, I think you'll find that that might just be a trying to tidy up a, a cycle of audit fees and then it will move back to what it should be. Reality is we should be have accrued probably more back into the 21 financial year and tidied up that particular issue because it was a very late order process down there. Thank you, I'll take it all back. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I, I, I did say there's probably one number we just need to double check before we bring a final through. Just got Neil wanting to say something, then I'll come to you, Councillor Reid. Yeah, we ran part of the total audit fees and the timing was out, so the timing of the invoice ended up being captured. I think it's something weird. Oh, yeah. With the cool money, you know, because we are able to do it. Yeah, no, I thought it was probably as much as just having a bigger account. So, yeah. Understandable. Keep, keep that. Keep to yourself. Um, Councillor Reedy. Yeah, uh, uh, I've got about four. Four questions in the line, please. If you can roll them into one, that'd be good. Okay, so I'll be told to uh, keep quiet. Uh, LTV, long term plan, uh, right at the top, what A, B, at the end of plan budget, 2024. Then um, uh, 24, 25, so LTV stands for long term plan. Yeah. But we have not long term plan yet, so what I see here, these next two columns, is what we produce the long term plan to here. Am I correct? So that could explain why there's a reduction coming into the previous uh, what it used to be reduction. Am I correct to say that? Yeah. So uh, essentially what we've got is an increase of about forty thousand dollars in um, uh, in staff costs. My understanding was we only employ one staff plus part timers to do the loading and offering. Yeah. Am I correct to say that? We, 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 and here we're about three point. Two FTEs, I think, there in terms of the airport handling work. Yeah, I think that you will find this. In the Um, well, they'll be the normal, they'll be the standard overheads of allocation of council management, crime council, right. finance, admin. But I've got to say, it does look like quite a high number in terms of the allocation. So that's one thing I will be looking at as well. But I can't, don't want, don't want to review it yet because of our budgets. Okay, two more, please. Um, building, buildings, car park, right? The buildings, car park, I'm saying. So I'm just assuming that it was the car park, $36,000. Correct. Okay, that's fine. So the budget is going to be used to include the car park resale, road connections, replacing fencing, and purchasing the vehicle. Uh, why do we need a vehicle there? You know, business that we don't have a vehicle, 
So we're going to purchase a vehicle. So who's the vehicle for? Um, I will check, but it may not be a car. It might be a, um, a four by four or something to get round. Okay, we've got yeah. the answer here, yeah. Chrissy. Uh, yeah, it's a runway vehicle. Just, just, just also quite early, the training budget needs to be um, appropriate because we have a lot of health and safety that um, we need to comply with CAA standards. So it needs to be sufficient for that. Yeah, 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 that's right. And just one last thing regarding the uh, car park reseal, we have a big issue. We look at the interpretation statement IS 1203, a lot of um, uh, a lot of stuff on that, but uh, can't, can't sure. the um, that car park reseal is not capital because uh, it, it is according to IR and uh, common law that will be. Uh, uh, not capital, but really what they call revenue expense or wage expense. Happy though for uh, being to uh, be from resort and from uh, office to comment on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just stop there, Councillor Thank yeah. you for pointing that out, but I'm trying to step away from I'm not too sure about the relevance of it for approving these. Um, if it's a technical matter, what I'd really appreciate, because it's not probably that helpful for everyone around the table, but if you can have that discussion with the Douglas and Neil, maybe later on, then we can clear that up if that's okay. That would be good. Um, any, did that wrap up all of your questions? Thank you. Anything, any further, Councillor Howell? I'm just wondering, given that we've got a, um, a building in a marine environment, uh, just we made with this like reworking or recreating or anything to speak it. Um, Chrissy, are you able to get your questions? I'm, I'm just aware that with the little we were um, not to get that building material, but it's a really marine but environment, and obviously it's got a lot of just to get that being set in the making for the speak to be in the recreate. From memory, there's nothing in the building in the next four or five years. But okay. Next, but, but there'll be a conditional assessment done as part of long term plan anyway, so it'll get picked up here for with me. Okay, so on that, um, I'm going to. Has anyone got a different, another view? Any other? Okay, so I've got the resolution here um, resolved that the Risk and Audit Committee. A, receive the statement of intent of the Westport Airport Authority for the year ended 30th of June 2024, and B, request staff to engage with the Ministry of Transport and report their views to the Council. We have someone move that way. Deputy Mayor Basher, seconded. Councillor Fallot. All in favour? Any against? Carried. Uh, May I call it, please? <coughs> it's a shame that you didn't do A and B. It's, um, well, I'll, I'll put them together. Nobody yeah. opposed it from you. So we're moving on. Agenda item number eight. And this is the Buller Holdings update on director appointments and associated remuneration. And we... Um, this is a good report. Thanks, Douglas, for putting this together. Um, you may recall that um, in the past we have um, done reviews. Obviously, it's, it's spelled out in the report and that back in 2021, the Council of the Day said that they would review the um, director's remuneration on a two-yearly basis. So this is what's brought this paper to us. And we also have one director that's uh, due for... Um, call it retirement by rotation, uh, which we have to make a decision around. So this is why this report is coming to us now and also nice and early. So the process rolls into the AGM of Buller Holdings, which is usually around November. So on that basis, I'll ask you, Douglas, if you have anything to add. And check on nothing else there. Okay. Any questions? Councillor Howard. Just one, I really agree with um, A through to C, but just um, these evaluations come at a cost. And I just want to know, just probably an awareness of what um, 
a replacement director's skills may need to be mm -hmm. by getting um, an external evaluation review that we're getting value of money for what, what it will cost that is, is worthwhile. Uh, is there some indication of what this, that would be? I think this is what forms part of this recommendation to find out what that would be if we were of a mind to, to go down that path. Must you submit we're not of a mind. On the cost. Yes. A, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's asking us to actually go down that line yet without finding out what the cost is. Proposal. Okay. Any discussion? Thanks, Councillor Howard. Any other discussion, Councillor Nagel? Well, I understand in the past that the, there's been a self review by the directors and then a review by the, um, well, we had a CCO committee, but I, I guess we've still got yourself and the mayor that liaise with the board. Yes. Is that an appropriate, still an appropriate method of review? We did have this discussion, Mr. Mayor, didn't we? About what would be an appropriate level. What what we what was done by council in the past is that the that we use some evaluation forms. They the, the directors fed into it. Then there was an overall board evaluation. Um, and one year, I think the chairman evaluated the directors. Um, I actually suggested what a good idea might be is that we carry on with that evaluation type of thing. And, but we also perhaps did a, an interview evaluation, so a one-on-one -on -one discussion with them. You had it, when you looked into it, Douglas, you saw it, perhaps there might have been a different way of going about it. Do you want to just talk a little bit further about that? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. On, on the IOD website, there's a, quite, quite a nice um, outline of what they do. They, they either do so as part of a, either a self review process by the directors of themselves, but then also a bit of a, um, an independent review of um, someone looking in and just yeah, having a bit of a maybe more about discussion. I think the key thing is what we're just trying to see is get a proposal for fee. We might look at it and go, no, no, I think we probably can't justify that as a fee. And, and we'll do some alternative, which just might be as you described um, in terms of that. So, yeah, it's a, um, I think one, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a good robust process you've had here for a number of years regarding how you look at the directors and manage these. Um, you have a director's appointment and remuneration policy, which needs a review. So we'll, we'll bring that at some stage back for discussion as well. Um, some of this work here will inform that policy review anyway. But, Okay, so Mr. Mayor? Uh, I, I agree. I think a lot of the internal um, reviewing is good, but I still think every three years or so it doesn't have to lift the lid and have any external, if it's, for, if it's remotely affordable, for someone just to kind of independently review them. It's all very easy for a board to become quite comfortable with itself. Um, and I think that's fine for the interim years, but I think every three years it doesn't have just to lift the lid. And, get a feel for how much professional development's going on, things like that, understand the appetite around the board for, you know, for their own skill set growth and stuff like that as well. And it's probably beneficial with the, in a year in which a director is stepping, well, is up for review after three years, after the first three years. So um, I'm go, I'm, what I might do is I'm going to put these individually because I think we need to have a little bit more discussion about each one as we go. So the recommendations are that the Risk and Audit Committee <coughs> the holdings limited, A, receive the report on the status of directors plus their associated remuneration. That's the first one. We'll move that way. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Seeing the Councillor name and all in favour? I'll see the report. Aye. Any against? No, so that one's carried unanimously. Um, the next one is request council staff to seek director's remuneration review for consideration prior to the 2023 AGM. I'm going to put that motion. Can I have a seconder, seconder council, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Basher? Any discussion? Councillor Reedy. I believe, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, I believe BMC might need to be read together or my read of the I think they're two separate things. The remuneration review is something that the Council of the Day back in 2021 
gave an undertaking to the directors that they would review, and it's in this, in this report, the recommendation that they would review the director's fees in two years' time. So I think regardless of what happens with the uh, evaluation of the directors, that we are committed, or we were committed at that stage, to carry out a review of the director's remuneration. I think it's quite important that we assure ourselves that we're not slipping behind the, the, you know, what is the market value of directors. Mr Mayor, did you have something to add? Well, in regards to remuneration, if we are slipping behind that, we're doing so with the awareness of the table that we're underpaying. Um, but I think the difference between B and C is C is very much about performance. Exactly. So professional skill set, um, you know, how they're performing in meetings, are they, are they attending? Um, actively participating in discussion, all that sort of thing. C is, uh, B is around, you know, we're paying. And, and it doesn't. It's, it's, it aligns nicely with, um, for instance, how we handle, handle our CEO um, work and that we separate the two. You pay for the job you do, and then you're held to account for how well you do that job. I think that's consistent with that policy. And it's not, just to be clear, this um, recommendation is not committing council to whatever that review says, it's just get providing the information in order to assess whether or not council would go forward with a recommendation to change the remuneration. So I'll, I've got a, oh, you want? Yeah, um, what form will that review take? So I would propose it's of the same form that we had back in 2021, which was an externally sought information from the Institute of Directors, I believe. Chair, there's a particular name for it, which just escapes me, but you um, it comes as a, about a 10 or 12 page document with giving you two or three options that you can select from. And local government generally selects from a lower quarter, which is understood by the industry. So it's quite a detailed report, which I think we found quite helpful. In the, and when it came to council last time, it, it, there were three different recommendations based on what part of the report you took. Um, so the cost is that sheeted to us or BHM? Uh, it, it sits on our books because we're requesting it for our appointments. So it's one of those things we need to budget for. I've got to move it and just second it. Did I get a second it? Uh, yes, you did. Okay, so I'm going to put that recommendation B. Does anyone want me to read it again or are we all good? Okay, all in favour? Aye. Any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. And then the last recommendation is recommendation C, that the Risk and Audit Committee regarding Bill Holdings Limited request council staff to seek a proposal from... A director's evaluation for a director's evaluation review for consideration prior to the 2023 AGM. I think we might want to just change that date because I think we there's quite a process to follow mm -hmm. after that. Um, so Madam Chair, we'll, we'll, obviously I'll be putting requests into the institute of directors pretty well straight away after this meeting for both both matters. I would expect I'll have a proposal back to you for next meeting. Okay. So that'll get us to May, and then we've got three, four, five months to deal with, to make a decision, make a decision in May, and then we've got three, four, five months to go through our process. So I think we've got plenty of time before the AG in November to um, have that evaluation if we decide to proceed with it. Okay. I, I, hear, I understand there's a bit of a question and we're taking out my work. No, we're just going to get the process complete by then, so it's constant on me to get it sorted now. Okay. Get started. If, if, if I come back to you in May with something we want to accept. So do I have a mover based on how it's written at the moment? Mr Mayor? Thank you clearly di discussed why the staff member of Cowie is going to do it. Second it. Councillor Grafton, all in favour? Uh, any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thanks for the discussion. Okay. Now we're moving on to the strategic... <laughs> Gosh, Strategic Risk Register, agenda item number nine. I just want to acknowledge that, that there's a lot of work goes into this risk register and um, Douglas has done a lot of work on updating it. And I also want to acknowledge that it's jolly hard to read on your devices. So my recommendation going forward is if anyone wants it, is 
that they get a hard copy. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to read. And I'm sorry, Jamie, that I'm suggesting. No, that. not at all. I was just going to say, hopefully soon we we'll, that's unfortunately the version that we're getting. We're not able to read it, but if we get an editable one, then I can make it easier yeah. for councillors to read. So I, I do appreciate that, that um, some may have found it a little bit difficult if they've got older eyes like me. And I, um, but that is always an option if you need um, something that's a little bit easier to read. Council Thank Western. you. Is that the whole one, like of all the, the colour coding and that sort of stuff? The whole one, or just yeah. Okay. okay. So on that note, then, well done to you all that have read it on your devices. So I will start with um, turning to Douglas for any comments before I open it up for questions from councillors for clarification. Then, Chair, I can care. It's quite a difficult one for even slightly younger eyes, maybe. Um, so we should have by now the um, version that will make it easier for us to deliver on that. I think one of the things I think I indicated, it'd be quite good to go through a process again with Phil Rossiter, who did this for you two, three years ago. I think it's that time to do. Um, and one of the things, the way we report to you, although that they're using the colour weed is quite good to show change, um, it would be better if it was in that matrix table, to be fair. So we just got to find a slightly more, because right now that matrix table is getting a little bit aged, and you've got to read the commentary to fully understand the position. So one of the things we just have to see with Phil, whether we can have next time around, whether it's a slightly different format we can use. Although it could be tricky, because that format's pretty standard, I think, under the, um, the ISO um, standard they use for this. But, uh, Anyway, the commentaries as yes. they are, we've updated for you. Thank you, thank you. So I'm taking the commentary as it's presented here, read, and I, I understand there's probably a number of things that people might want to discuss that um, councillors may want to discuss. So I'm just going to firstly open it up for questions for clarity. So to clarify what you may have, those sort of questions first before we put the motions and then have a bit more discussion around it. So questions for clarity. Councillor Reedy. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, in terms of uh, item number six, information management. Um, yep. Is the software currently implemented or are we still implementing the software? We're using the software called SharePoint to, as it is the backbone of our information system. And it's been implemented? Yes. Is this that as you move, sorry? No, as, you, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you implement your software and you move your um your yeah, some some of your digital based files will move into SharePoint and other your hard copy files are scanning and moving into SharePoint, which is the software. It's a Microsoft product for memory. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to take that a little bit further. Thank you, Councillor Reedy. And I'm going to tag on to your question. And I'm going to ask, because you've talked about that um, the cost exceeds the budget and it's now going to be done as part of business as usual. So from a risk point of view, because it talks about property files, what is the risk of not having those property files digitalised quicker? Because if, if we think of what might be around the corner from a risk point of view, say there's an AF8 or something like that, and we potentially lose files or whatever happens. What, so I guess my question is, what's the time frame for it to be carried out as business as usual? And the next one is by doing it like that, what is the risk? Yeah. Uh, so I might Good answer question. it, might answer it slightly oddly. Um, the great thing about going and starting this process is we're de-risking ourselves every day. So if you think about before we started this process of digitizing, our risk was reasonably high because everything was hard copy. So as we've moved and we're moving the more com more commonly used and more you know looked at files, we're we're reducing ourselves. That's all minimalistic risk. Um from memory, I think the cost, and I might be correct that I thought it was around about 140, 150,000, but I think that's roughly what it was. You know, it, it is a significant cost. I think that, well, I think, I know the way we've started is you have to start somewhere. And so we've started with a reasonably you know, good structure of using, uh, getting a staff member on board to drive the organization through this. We're using a, um, a well, well recognized firm who do these projects for government in particular. Um, and we're just working through and biting off those chunks. 
it does mean that you might have to be here for 10, 15 years to get the full benefit of a digital program. Um, so the question is, are we doing the right files to minimize our risk? One of the things when you have reports back to you about um, Brown House over the next few while, one of the things we'll probably be in our risk list too is how do we manage the issues that are really important about that building, such as record storage. Um, I'm particularly concerned about where our server room sits in that building on the second floor. So there are other things about this project which not really related, but are very much intrinsic with this project if we do end up with an outcome fault about how we do manage that part of our process going forward. To some degree, um, I mean, property files, you know, it won't be hard to grab a property file and realise that the house you're looking at on the site on the street, there's no building consent for it anyway, because it's too old to have building consent. So some of the property files here in Buller, are, I would imagine, are reasonably skinny. So to some degree, the area where I see might be the, the greatest risk is in that subject file process. And so we have a lot of our, you know, a lot of our subject files since we've been using you know, Word documents and all that sort of thing are saved and are sitting in, you know, a directory and they get backed up. So the hard copy property files to me is probably that if you're having to worry about which files you want to get digitally done, they're probably the ones at the lower end, to be fair, I would suggest, because of what they contain. I mean, I stand to be corrected by someone, but I do think unless we throw a pile of money at it, we might come back as part of the next long-term plan saying, we think you might want to consider this for funding. Um, but right now, we're just working within the budgets we've got and trying to just de-risk. As I say, every day we de-risk a bit further. I guess it's from my point of view as fuel risk and assurance is that maybe that's a consideration councillors may wish to think about leading into the long-term plan, whether that that budget um, covers and covers mitigates enough risk around our information management. Um, questions on other matters? <coughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. I just add further along this discussion. For, is it a question for clarification? Uh, we just mentioned before about the next long term plan. Oh, I don't no, really want to jump into the okay. long term plan. No, no, but you mentioned um, uh, just before about the cost of digitising and social <coughs> But yeah, but I don't want to be pulling out figures from the long term well, plan because we're doing that. What I'm trying to say though, Madam Chair, is that that's the question that we've just been discussing. Was included in the uh, 21 to 31 long term plan. It seems to have got lost somewhere on the line. This morning, you're concerned about the fact that we have got to about $200,000 operational costs per round for 10 years on here, yet we don't seem to have any money to be able to um, do the digitalizing. That's what I'm saying. I'm struggling to do the long term plan for that. Perhaps we can have that discussion a little bit further in the financial performance. <coughs> There's something we can talk about there. Um, I'd like to go back, go back a couple of because I'm pretty clear in my mind that we, over that 10 year period, it wasn't 200,000 a year, it was something like 647,000 over a 10 year period. Sure, a couple of years we were up around that 200, but then it really does tail off to more like a sort of a maintenance budget over years, four to, four to 10 from memory. That was one of the matters under investigation we could pull back on, I think, two metres ago. We we drew for another capital report, so we'll remind ourselves. Of course, it won't appear as a capital report item next time around because we're going to write off those costs against OPEX. So I don't think it's tips, you know, 200,000 a year. Okay. No, we'll, no, we'll this is quite the place to address it, but we'll, we'll, we'll carry on past that. We don't want to get held up on that. So any other risk items? Thinking about what Douglas has updated here and then anything else that has not been updated. That's the reading. Oh, and I'll talk about one more discussion about number eight. Uh, the, it says here, um, Mark Hall, the uh, current engine emissions have been amended, allowing the dredge to continue. Uh, do we have any idea of uh, what was needed? Uh, what, uh, so, 
Yeah. And Madam Man, Chair, there's two things. One is that the engine emission is under 130 kilowatts and dredge generates 120 kilowatts. And the second is there's a, um, and I'll probably get this right, well, can say right or wrong. <laughs> you have it one way or the other. There's a there's a, a rule in the emissions regarding rivers and closed waterways like lakes and so forth, allowing some um, how would you put it the slippage in terms of the emission um, being met. So the, the the way the the emission change works for the Kawateri is she's under that um, that level, which is great. And because we we although we work in the river and we work, work in a couple of ports. Uh, we're allowed and entitled to go and do other work with that with that boat. boat. But what uh, one of the reports we were looking to deliver this month, but it will be next month, is an update on the March 2021 dredge report, which was a strategy done for the council. So we'll be updating and reporting on that. So we'll give more information on that point. Thank you for that explanation. Anything else in the comments that have been made here? Councillor O'Keefe. Information that's oh, been provided to you. I'll um, manage. I'll, I'll take councillors' words on that, and I'll get a um, get a review done and feedback to you. Okay. Anything else in the this register? There's just a few things under the control plans, which I think with that, I don't want to labour over them, but they just need a little bit of updating around dates, like dates have passed and things that have, that have been done probably can drop off now or they can just be, like, for example, I'll just use an example. Um, number 19 talks about um, reputation and stakeholder engagement, political, and it talks about vote 2022 election campaign and so on, not not quite that relevant now to, to what's in here. Yeah, just a few things that, yeah, that, that I'm not going to labour over, but I know that, that you'll yeah, update it accordingly. Yeah. Anything else of significance? Okay, so I'm going to put the resolution. Um, resolved that the Risk and Audit Committee note the updates received for the Strategic Risk Re Register at April 2023. Someone like to move that way. Move, Mr. Mayor, seconded Councillor Weston. Any further discussion? Councillor Reedy. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, just regarding um, uh, item six, I totally disagree with item six. And in my mind, I also disagree with item eight. I will, I will be. Um, uh, I will be. Uh, let's say uh, adopting the um, or accepting that for review. I just, I just want to note that I disagree with those two comments. We okay. Thank you. We'll put the motion, which has been moved and seconded. All in favour. No, any against? Carried unanimously. Thank you. And thank you for the work on that risk register. We'll see that in another three months. Okay. Right, next one is the financial performance report. And this is the agenda item number two, uh, 10, and it's the monthly financial performance report as at the 28th of February, if we just remember that. And Douglas, you might just want to. Have a little chat about that one little piece of commentary, which is paragraph two. Um, so, Madam so, so, Chair, probably just a bit of clarification from me. I referred to Harbour, isn't it? 
difference is mostly. Yeah, so one of, one of the things with the dredge activity, which isn't explained as well as it could have been a couple of spots. So with the dredge activity, um, some of the management speak of, I'm focused on working with Steve Christensen, and dredge master, from now through to about March next year on delivering a what's called Trash 2 works and also lining up our work in uh, Nelson as the out of port work we do regularly. Uh, and also we're looking at a couple of other ports that we might look to do. So we have just um, finished a dredge uh, swing, which was the period of 28 days. They got finished last week. We've been doing our billing for last week through to Trash 2 and then we're forecasting out what our work will be for the calendar year, and I've made a reference here, which could easily be interpreted as being that June 23 financial year. So we've got with the, the income for till June will be uh, in the region of about another four to five hundred thousand dollars. We'll report into March and forecasting on that. One of the things we've been focusing on is that we will probably be doing what you will be double swing crewing the dredge for a few for a few periods from July through to December. And that is just to allow us to get through all, um, the obligations as we see them, do the work a bit quicker. We also may need to spend a little bit of time in Nelson when we go up there with the, the boat, just getting one or two maintenance issues done. But um, that means we'll have probably quite a, quite a really solid cash flow from July. And so that, that reference is more about the cash flow for the dredge from now until March 24, as opposed to the financial year ending in June 23. None of that may have really made sense, but um, it's just something to apologise. It's just we're focusing on that dredge program till next year, and then that's where we have quite a good, strong cash flow. That's what we want to report to you on in May and highlight the work that was done back in March 21, and therefore showing that we're in quite a, we're in where we expect to be for the dredge strategy at this time. That's great. Thanks for that clarification. Douglas, um, anything else in that report before I open up for questions for clarification? Not a sheet, don't you? Not a sheet, okay. <laughs> right, I'm opening it up for questions for clarification. Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've got a number of questions, but I'll just start with one of my questions. Uh, just, uh, just talking before about the dredge. Now, uh, when, as we you know, a few years ago, we were so often supported uh, the dredge operation for the house. It's going to be root fees. Uh, unfortunately, with the monthly reporting, uh, the what we call a root fence is included in the PAU for EDC. So we can actually see what the operation is for the dredge. So why is it a very separate cost center? We should get a separate cost center in the, uh, the GL. So why are we not seeing this as a separate report or alternatively call it a separate uh, Yep, Douglas can answer um, that. And Chair, as I just said before, we're reporting on the dredge ring fenced activity, if we add those words into what I said before, in May, reporting on May. So you'll see the report we're looking for. Yeah. In May, you'll May. see a report. But at the moment, everything's included here, though, isn't it? Well, correct, because we have to report on the income and expenditure of the dredge as part of the council activities. But when you get down into the equity statement, some of that stuff then just goes circular into its own closed account. Some of it rolls into general reserves, but the dredge sits in the, the dredge account. So it's not reported each month, but it will be, we're getting a specific report around it. Correct, yeah. Next month. Okay. Uh, Councillor Howard. I'd forward a couple of questions. It was just a further explanation. Page 118 under the um, additional grant revenue, the explanation of on the commercial and corporate services is cut off on what came through to us in diligence. So yeah, that could be just um, what it, and for what that estimation should be. And then down below there, the community facilities um, is it's just a, a round comment about community library funding budget and additional um, government subsidies. So just a bit, just a bit of elaboration on what particularly those Okay. Can you give me the first one again? Yeah, the first one is um, page 118, um, additional grant revenue, commercial corporate services. It's got the National Transition Unit and Department of Internal Affairs funding that um, was well, not budgeted for. This funding is used to fund expenditure that, but that's when that commentary is cut out. 
Yeah. Trying to find it. Yeah, yeah. 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 sorry. Yep, I need to expand on that. I can grab my slide. No, Neil might have an answer. Additional oh, grant yeah. revenue. Yes. Yes. Neil. So just as a defined expenditure, that was also not budgeted for. So just cut off, I think, before that. So just to finish that thing, it's just what's been interesting. Yeah, so, so with what, what, what the, um, so Chair, mm -hmm. the three waters entity provide us with money to assist us to do the, um, provide the information they need for creating the three waters. So we didn't have that in our budgets, income or expenditure, but we get the money, it's a neutral cost to us. Yeah, that's why there's no budget. And the second one, the final one was community facilities. It just says that community library funding budget year date was 200. Well, K not yet received. I'm just I'm just trying to refresh my memory about what that funding was coming from. Um, and then there was another one about offset by additional government subsidy for 128K. And I, I seem to remember us being told what that was, but just if um, you could refresh my memory about what that subsidy was. We got some good memories here. Um, we did last week. I can't remember what it is then. Neil? Oh, okay. Okay, we'll come back to We'll formally drop an email back from both of us too. Okay, thanks, thanks, Councillor Howard. You did send those in advance, but we'll... we'll yeah, my apologies, I'm over Councillor Reedy. Two, two quick ones for me, please, Madam yes. Chair. Uh, once the 40000 for the Ministry of Transport uh, on the airport, I sent a report a couple of years ago, uh, I didn't know they were going to uh, provide 40000 for uh, lighting, which yes. again they paid for a lot. They did. So why are we carrying forward 40,000 we have now, which was uh, budget for two years ago or one year ago? Might be a different thing. That's what I'm asking. Yep. Yeah. The airport, Neil, any ideas? Um, I mean, sure, that's, a, I mean, that's a variance council already of 40,000, so it's not actually related to a a grant, it's just probably coincidence that number. It's just that the we're predicting we'll have a higher grant revenue from Ministry of Transport for the airport than our budget. No, first to uh, CapEx. The reason why it's showing there is because it's uh, we don't call CapEx, so therefore it's, uh, yeah. it's CapEx. How do we know it's CapEx How do we know it's CapEx Council ready? From this line, how do we know it's CapEx? Uh, because I went, I went further down. Oh, it's in the commentary. It's in the commentary on the home, page 116. It says, just to, so everyone knows, is this what we're talking about? 40K of additional funding expected to be received from Ministry of Transport for airport capital expenditure by the end of the year. So it'll be, it must, I don't think oh, it'll relate okay. to the lights. We'll it'll, get some further information no, on that. No, 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 I can answer that now. It'll, it'll go back to the things like the work we're doing on the car park and a couple other things that they will be billed for their share by end of year. That's what that will relate to. Because they pay, they pay, mid year, they pay a grant towards operational and they pay a grant towards the capital. It's generally the same payment, but that's how that gets calculated. It would have been the outside budget. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, I mean, if we can get more money out of the Ministry of Transport, we do. Mm -hmm. So if we're above budget, that's a good thing. If we're above budget, that's not such a good thing. Yeah. That's why that's better. Second one. Second one. When these uh, reports are produced, do you employ all the accounting or is it just a general income? It's a cruel account. A cruel account. Yeah. So we close, we obviously, if this is the end of February, so we close, we've closed our ledger off. Uh, generally around about, in this case, about the 16th, 17th of March. We will do some journal. We will do journals for accruals where we see there are major, major issues we want to bring in for income and expenditure. But, I mean, we don't bring every item that we can in, but, yep, there are a set of accrual accounts as at the end of February. Councillor Howard. Sorry, one other um, thing. I had to send them prior for uh, page 116, 3.1, the first paragraph. Clarification around the wording is got down to this budget to lease out that campground, which did not materialise. Is that meant to be campground or um, can we specify a particular campground that it refers to? We had this in the last month, one, yes. two. Yeah. Chrissy. Yeah. Four campgrounds? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Awesome. That was my assumption. So I just wanted to make this notice of section to report that it should be the same background. I think you need to keep the guns background so it's going to be half of the sections of the second district. Is there about the um, and councils around the base house out? I believe that's an interesting figure in there. We haven't quite lost that point yet. We know that it's coming. Could we just note that um, correction on the report that it should refer to Kent Reynolds? So it's just a, as a general rather than yeah, so yeah, it is plural. So in the just referring back to the um, action point notes where we did that was asked last time, remember, about campgrounds, and it does say staff have reviewed this comment and note that there have been various proposals to lease campgrounds in the last two to three years. So it is campgrounds. Yeah, so we should have picked up the next yeah. option. Yes. Sorry, that should have been amended. Fix that for next time. Okay. Um, yes. Councillor. So I'm just going to go to Councillor Sampson. I'll come back to you and then I'm going to wrap it up. Um, just following on from the campgrounds and leases, I also put a question um, through just asking for a breakdown of what the leasehold income was in the budget, seeing it was sort of down 144000 um, for a breakdown of what the Orawiti Cemetery and leasehold was in furthering on the same with the community expenses. Um, so that's yes, and thank you for getting that question in advance, Council Sampson. I've probably just been overlooked, but that's I we'll get that information out and we'll put it in the actions to come out. So you did ask for um, yeah, a good yeah, a, question I'm there. I'm concerned about the community facilities one, whether it is to be done in the future or um, whether it's just. Okay. Thank you. Thank and thanks for posing that question. Advance, we'll get that action. Yep. Councillor Reedy, last last go. Uh, just just talking about the uh, campground lease. My understanding was, and I would have discussed this under I'm excluded, but my understanding. Was that uh, we, uh, there was a lease with Punakaiki? That's in, correct. In our, um, in our revenue and our budget? Yes. So we're talking about four, obviously, as you mentioned, four campgrounds, but we've already got one there, so we're actually uh, just being accounted for, which is a lease. So we're now looking at three others, Wapa Mooney, Reefton, and maybe one other. I think we're saying that. <laughs> So, Seddonville and Caramere. Okay. Okay, is that a question? You're making it's a, a point. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. So, so, maybe the question, maybe the answer is that there is one lease already, which is Pinakaki, and there are four other leases being considered for campgrounds, which will cover those four names we referred to. Okay, so on that note, for the questions, we're going to, I'm going to put the motion. that um, the Risk and Audit Committee received the Operational Performance Report to the 28th of February 2023 for information. If someone moved that way, Councillor Phillip, seconded, Councillor O'Keefe, all in favour? Aye, any against? Abstaining, please, Madam Chair. Okay, one abstent. Okay, carried. Okay, we're gonna move on now to agenda item number 11 which is the Investments and Borrowings Report. Okay, Douglas, anything for you to Okay. <coughs> Taking this report very much as read, but we'll open it first for any questions for clarification or I put the motion. Any questions for clarification? Okay, thank you for a well-written report. I'll put the motion that the Risk and Audit Committee receive the Investments and Borrowings Report as at the 28th of February for information. So moved, Mr Mayor, seconded. Deputy Mayor Basher, all in favour? Aye. Any against? Carried unanimously by those in the room. Oh, no. It's not, but it's unanimously by who's in the room. I just to record his name. 
Okay. Moving on to projects and partnerships. Agenda item number 12. And well, you'll be have would have become very familiar with this report by now. Um, what I thought was very helpful in this particular report is it somehow that all the stars have aligned and we've got the minutes of the um, projects and partnership meeting in advance, which is actually really helpful when you're reading the reports as well. So well done to the to the, to the Kirsten, the minute secretary, for getting those and getting them included in here because I think it very much answers some of the questions that would, that councillors would have brought up. So on that, I'll ask for any questions for clarification. Just, just, just one, we always used to have one Angora in our notes, not a partnership one, yep. but it was always here. It seems to, it's one member of water, but it seems to have been dropped off reporting. That's why I mean, oh, oh hi. <laughs> uh, the reason it's been dropped off is because it, it is not externally funded, it's actually internally funded for the work that's happening now. That's why it's been the case, and it's always in a report as to where it sat within the progress. The same as Reefton was also one that was not externally funded, and um, I think Reefton is finished now. And my neighbor, I'll always see them. Not to my understanding, but I'm, 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 I can't be proved wrong on this one, but my understanding was that, that one of the meetings, that, that I can't remember which one, but anything that was internally funded was not to go to PIP because it was only relevant to the. Oh, to, that, to, to you're the, exactly right. And because these, these are the reports that actually go to the PIP um, committee, that's why they're published. So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that whether it was or wasn't uh, had some internal external external funding for the purpose. Mr. Mayor, can you help oh, with that? I'm going to scratch my memory now because um, there was various funding streams for those water ones. Yes. There was an element of the Reefton upgrade that was funded from somebody else, but um, infrastructure IRG or whatever they were. Um, <coughs> and I think same for one man at some point. Oh, there so, was the 200 odd thousand for the from the health or whatever that is. Yes, it was, it was because it was the time that came from the health. Yeah. That's why we went through the previous. So we are quite strict. Oh, I realise that. that. Um, so, so that report will come through at some point when you when the, your other reporting comes through to full council on those type of projects through or through infrastructure, is it? Yeah, it won't be a specific report, it's BAU, it's just part of delivering the annual plan commitment. So it's mm -hmm. Council's normal. Mm. I'll go back and check myself and I'll just see okay. what heading it came under. But it was before the money from the ministry came in. It was always reported. So I'll just go back. You have a look for that, Council of Samson, the, the projects and partnership now, if it's an issue. Can you just cancel Not only clarification, but just from a risk of insurance perspective, informing the purpose of media, it's good to. Note that in Robert's um, document about the, the tip head rock wall, um, just noting that the suitability of the rock was formally approved by the engineers. A very interesting procedure. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Council. The rock wall was approved by the engineers. Okay, it's good to know. Okay, anything else within this report? Okay, thank you once again to those on the projects and partnership um, committee, Mr. Mayor and Councillor Grafton, and for um, once again for having those minutes in there that go alongside those reports, very helpful. So the resolution is that the Risk and Audit Committee received the projects and partnership update report for information. Have someone move that way. Councillor Fellot, seconded Councillor Grafton, all in favour? Aye, any against? Carried unanimously, thank you. Okay, now we get to the motions around um, moving into public excluded. So we've got a few public excluded matters, which I'll read out here for information for the, everyone in the public. Okay, so we have item 14, 
which is around the Punakaiki campground upgrade and um, that's we're moving into public excluded um, as it would likely unreasonably um, to prejudice commercial position of the person who supplied the information and so on. 15, Ernst and Young management closing report and we've got the three sections there that apply and then the um, Buller Holdings BDC governance meeting draft minutes of the 12th of April and we had two section seven um, areas reasons there. So, um, and thank you once again, Councillor Reedy for pointing out just the way in which they're recorded and we've had um, acting CEO Rachel go through those to make sure that we've got them as we should have them. So, got them all there. I'm going to um, put the motion that the public be excluded from the following parts of proceedings of the meeting based on the items as listed. Could I have someone moved that way? Councillor Weston, seconded Councillor Grafton, all in favour? Aye, any against? Carried. Carried? Uh, I'm not sure. Can I have another show of hands? All in favour? Aye. Thank you, carried unanimously. Thank you, um, Alan, for joining us. Thank you. Fill up your pages with that one. Yeah. <laughs>